Hello, welcome back to Vancouver, Canada. Quick fact, it transpires that Vancouver has the highest ownership of supercars per capita in the world. It's probably because there's only around about 1.3 million people here and clearly a lot of wealth, but also a lot of passionate petrol heads. Hence why there is this brace of incredible supercars behind me. Four of these cars are owned by two Gumballers. I just so happened to meet these guys over the last three weeks on the London to Japan Gumball 3000 rally and now I have flown out here to join them on a drive to Whistler. I'm in the Speciale Aperta, Jordan's in the green 812 Superfast and Dylan is bringing along the Aventador SV Roadster and the Huracan Performante. Let me just give you a quick look at these cars and some of the other cars that just so happen to be lying around Wraith 4x4 squared. This place is so cool. Okay, let's start from the back of the lineup and work our way forwards. Introducing the McLaren 720S that so has actually joined us from McLaren Vancouver. I went to the luxury and supercar show of Vancouver when I arrived here on a very rainy Sunday earlier on this week and I met a great guy called Zane, just so happens to be a subscriber to the channel and when he found out that we were doing this drive, he said, you know what? Can I join in the 720S? Of course, Zane, it's so good to have you on board. Look at the spec of this, you know, I love the perforations and the gradient on this seat makes the environment look a lot more special. There is one thing that I do wish that the interior of my 720S had, and that was a more contrast interior. It's fistral blue, but nonetheless, who am I to complain? This is an incredible spec, heavy on the carbon. Check out, I just love these inlets. This is one of the cars that has grown on me so much since it launched. When it first launched, I think I'm not alone in saying that let's face it the car community wasn't too sure about how it looked standing here in front of this now what were we thinking <laughs> look how amazing this looks look at the stance it's so cool and to think that one day they're going to make an lt version of this blows my mind anyway we'll catch up with zane and uh, find out more about this car on our drive this is my car this is the car that i'm going to be driving for the next few days i have been dying to drive a Speciale Aperta since the day it launched. Now, for those of you guys who regularly watch the channel, you know that I'm an owner of a 458 Speciale, the non-convertible version. This is the Speciale A for Aperta. Aperta in Italian means open, and that's where this roof comes in. The roof opens up and exposes the crazy cool interior with this red contrasting Alcantara, but more importantly, opens up the roof so you can get more of that high revving flat plane V8 from Italy. And it looks awesome. I'm still getting used to things like reflectors on the sides of cars out here. It's the North American market dictates that we have to have reflectors on the extremities of the car, which we don't have to have in Europe. But other than that, basically follows the same premise, lightweight, less sound deadening, more attack, but you can take the roof off and enjoy the sound even more in this car. And then this car, you guys, if you've been watching my journey that I did uh, Gumball 3000, London to Tokyo, this is Jordan's other car. So Jordan, by the way, also owns the Aperta. This is Jordan's other latest, greatest car, Verde Hikers. There's a bit of background to this color. Uh, if you remember quite a few years ago, we're going back to more, well, maybe 2007, Ferrari launched a 599 prototype, which was actually a hybrid. And the paint that was on that was this color. It was Verde Hikers. It was exclusive to that car when it launched. And the hybrid eventually made its way into the La Ferrari, making this paint a very significant color. I've been told by Jordan that in order to get this, he basically had to beg and wait and plead in order to get the 812 painted in this color. If you were to talk me through this spec without showing it to me in person, I wouldn't have thought it worked. But honestly, I'm not sure how well the camera's doing it justice. It works so well. The paint has got a heavy metallic fleck in it. It's triple layer pearlescent as well, so you can see it shows up the contours fantastically. And even with these Gumball stickers on, even outside the environment of Gumball, it still looks amazing. And then we are joined by another naturally aspirated V12 from Italy. 
the Aventador SV Roadster. This is Dylan's car and this is also Dylan's car. If you watched my video yesterday, we had a brief introduction to Dylan. I'm sure we'll be talking to him more over the next few days. These things just don't age, do they? They just get better and better. The sculpture on them, look at this. It is a display case for a fabulous V12 engine. And of course, just like the Aperta, the roof comes off to let in more of that fantastic sound. The difference between this car and the Aperta, of course, is that the Aperta's roof is an automated. This is more of a Targa. So you'll notice this split here. You manually remove these two sections and there's a space in the boot specifically designed to store the roof. Hopefully on this trip, I'll get a chance to drive this and immerse you guys in it. I've only ever passengered in an SV Roadster. The theater, I'm still adamant that Lamborghini do theater better than anyone else. So hopefully we'll be able to bring you guys an insight into driving one of these in the incredible mountains of Whistler is like with the roof off. That would be so special. And then to top it all off, we've also joined by Dylan's Huracan Performante. And to see this as one big lineup, I mean, just take a look down there. It's so, so special. So this is our lineup for the next few days. We're heading up to Whistler. We're gonna be hitting some of the world's greatest mountain roads, staying in a lovely chateau, even though it's not quite ski season right now, it is open. And we're gonna be exploring what all of these cars are like in one of the world's best driving environments. Let's hit it. Obviously I drive a lot around the world and I'm always fascinated at the price of fuel. I once filled up four cars in Saudi for around about 30 pounds. <laughs> so that's my benchmark of cheap fuel. What are we on here? Uh, 173 Canadian dollars a liter. I'm gonna do the conversion and get back to you on that one. Okay, Transpires, that's around about one British pound per liter. That's about 30 pence cheaper than our Supra unleaded back home like in Canada. Check this out as well. This is something we don't have back in the UK, a hot dog barbecue at our service station. Check this out. And they put chili on for free. For they put chili on for free. Usually chili dog's more expensive. Man, this is making UK yeah. service stations look really it's, bad. It's a pound. Like, <laughs> it's a pound a liter for fuel and they've got a hot dog barbecue. Yeah. This is the and best for me. That's it. That's it. There's two with nothing. Thanks so much. Okay, amazing. Not only do we have an amazing barbecue, we also have over 50 condiment toppings. This is this is a Canadian service station, guys. This is unbelievable. Uh, there's Check no this way out. They, they cannot so you eat. went for the chili and the onions? Yes, well, I was originally going to the chili, and then when you chased for both, I thought I could be uh, on Are that. you going to put anything extra on it as well? I, I'm Some condiments? The Can Kelsey you think about the hamburger part of the hot dog's present? <laughs> this is the way she made it. <laughs> Look, that's, uh, I'm not that's gonna, the magic touch right I'm not going to question That's what it's chef. all about. Don't, yeah. I mean, over here, that's for next time. <laughs> next time. I don't know. Dude, I fly home tomorrow. There's no next time. We have to drive past We have to come back tomorrow, Kelsey. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. I know is that a Ferrari? Are we going to Whistler and back? Yeah. One full tank of gas. Oh, that, that's worked we out conveniently well. Here. We have to yeah, stop here again. Yeah, Strategically here. placed. Yes, we've worked our way from Vancouver all the way up towards Whistler. We're on a road called Sea to Sky Highway, uh, which as the name would suggest, winds its way past the ocean and into the mountains. Now, I 
had the honor and pleasure of driving through pretty much the majority of the mountain ranges in Europe, there's something about the Canadian mountains. The scale of it is just breathtaking. It's truly next level stuff. Right now, we're lucky to be here just before ski season. So no snow has fallen down here, but on top of the mountains, you can see the caps are dusted with snow. I've always wanted to come to Whistler. It's been on the list for years. Uh, ultimately, I want to come here and ski but this is a pretty good way of doing it. I'm already getting a really good feel for it, but it's such an honor to be able to drive these incredible roads surrounded by amazing cars and great people. And the idea is that we're gonna end up in a lovely hotel in Whistler shortly, which I shall share with you once we arrive. We're gonna have some great food and debrief and chat and whatnot. So a few more minutes drive and then we'll debrief at the hotel. to the penthouse. <laughs> so I've just come out of the normal lifts and apparently there's another lift which must be this lift. Yes, this lift to levels 11 and 12 only. So let's see what this is all about. Reason behind this, with net, oh so yeah so 12, I'm gonna press button 12. I'm in room 1241. Um, look, never been to Whistler, always wanted to go, been upgraded to the penthouse. God knows what this is gonna be like, but obviously I'm gonna show you guys around. We are 1241 Banff Suite. It's here. Already. Way to go first, through there or through here? Let's go through here first, I wanna tease that bit. Oh man, this is a bathroom. Look at the size of the place. Look at this. Wow, the marble even has a metallic fleck in it like the cars. <laughs> what on earth, look at this, this amazing exposed like 3D layered brick. All right, let's take you through inside and see what to actually have they dropped off. Yeah, they dropped off bags, so we're in here. <gasps> It's actually a hall. This is a, oh, it's duplex. Look at the scale. This is a hotel room. Look at the size of this. It is a duplex, two-story penthouse, no less. What do we think the view is like? Can I open this easily? I literally can't find how to open that. Wow. Oh, look at this. Look at the view. We can see, oh my good God. We are central, smack bang central, overlooking. Look, here's our cars. There's the cars lined up for us. And this is the most insane view. Wow. What a phenomenal location. Mini bar in here somewhere. Mini bar, stocked up. All of these amenities and sweets and M&Ms and Pringles. Fireplace. I can't get over, this is like double heighted ceiling. It's huge. Let's go upstairs and see what's what. This is amazing. Wow. I love how the bed is up here on its own level. Imagine being able to draw the curtains and have a look over that view. TV in the corner there. And I think we have another bathroom. So there's two bathrooms. That's the upstairs bathroom. More marble. Showers downstairs. Look at the scale of this place. It's so cool. 
Jordan wasn't kidding. He was like, let me upgrade you to the penthouse. Okay, okay. Uh, can't thank the guy enough. He has been so incredibly kind, showing me the time of my life since I've been out here in Canada. A few days in Vancouver, a couple of days out here in Whistler, and now he's gone and bumped me up to the penthouse. What an incredibly generous dude. Look at this as well, we got all the wardrobes here. Pity I can't fill this full of awesome clothes because I'm only here for one night. <sighs> Let's go chat with Jordan downstairs. All right, yeah. we've made it to the Fairmont Chateau, right? We did, we did awesome. finally the finish line. Good so day. I've just uh, been in awe of all of the scenery, so I didn't really, if I'm honest with you, yeah. didn't take on board everything well, we did. Where, where so were we? What did we go? <laughs> so we started, we started in Vancouver, basically yeah. at the festival site from Skookum. Uh -huh. uh, drove up through the Stanley Park, yeah. over the Lionsgate Bridge, Canada's version of the Golden Gate Bridge, over Burrard. Which the, is awesome. Which takes you over and, and then basically put, takes you out of the city, yeah. the sea, takes you from the sea and start going to the sky. We drove up the Sea to Sky Highway up to Squamish, which is halfway to Whistler where the Olympics were in 2010 and then drove through there, some of this so then you come up there go into the mountains yeah. of Whistler but we drove past that into Pemberton to sort of see where it even gets more rugged and more extreme and just more Canadian that Canadian yeah. those coastal mountains like, we were, these aren't the Rocky Mountains this is a okay. different mountain range yeah but the same kind of idea yeah. these same huge vibe. peaks yeah. glaciers on the top the whole bit there was one thing I was saying yeah. while I was driving like I've done my fair share of driving through the European Alps yes but there's something about the scale of it here yeah. you know it's uh, just a next level Everything. Everything's just turned to 11. Big. Everything's yeah, 11. Everything's huge. Yeah, man, no, exactly. You know? But so it's, been, it's been fantastic. Yeah. We have some great roads, yeah. uh, awesome cars. For sure. And we stopped for an amazing hot dog. We saw the, the best. <laughs> we're getting another <laughs> one way back. So we're here. So I've heard a lot about this hotel. This is the Fairmont Chateau Whistler. Chateau Whistler. I've always wanted to come to Whistler. Yeah. Granted, maybe when it was snowing, but well, I'm going to yeah. come back. Well, this is definitely not the, this is the slowest time of year, right? Sure. It's yeah. too mushy to golf very well. Yeah. And it's not. Is it like downhill mountain bike season. A lot of that going on. Like if you want to knock your face off a bike, this is the place. This is the place this to do it right now and you're covered in mud the whole thing right so awesome. and it's great and, and, and this, these these hotels they're just the, the fairmont hotels yeah. in canada are unbelievable because they built them with the train tracks when they built the train across canada like 100 years ago yeah these were the places that were built to support them and not so much this one it's more of a resort hotel but when you go to sure. lake louise banff and calgary yeah, and stuff yeah. you get these castles and they all the like, banff hotels huge yeah, it's unbelievable well, it's literally right? a castle, yeah right? exactly yeah, the incredible. fairmont chain in canada is pretty wow. special it's really canada's castles yeah yeah fantastic yeah. Right? all right well let's head inside yeah. and uh, maybe sit by a fire i think we need a caesar Let's do it. Take a double drink. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Ciao.